An interesting problem that I've been thinking for a long, long time is how do we regain our joy for learning? How exactly do we regain this childish curiosity? How exactly do we navigate, intelligently navigate through some of the constraints that we have? To become truly curious, to become truly authentically motivated to learn. Wouldn't it be great if we were all as excited about school as some of our pop culture favorite characters like Lisa Simpson, Rory Gilmore, Steve Urkel? Their character arcs are centered around their high academic achievement and just general intellect. But in real life, why are we all not that excited about learning? I'll give you a scenario. It's about halfway through the term, your teacher assigns a project, maybe they even bring in your librarian. I can guarantee you, you did not listen during that presentation, and I'm even more certain that you didn't go to the librarian after class to ask for help. So let's redesign it. Let's say that the librarian develops the syllabus and the curriculum with your teacher to make sure that you have all the resources you need to have an immersive learning experience where you're not just taking tests and quizzes, but you're doing podcasts, video projects like this one, or you're doing simulations, debates, or when you come across something interesting in class, but it's not a key focus, you could go to your librarian to learn more about it and see what you can do with it in your community or just personally. In terms of college applications, academic contests can be super rewarding and beneficial, but wouldn't it be nice to have someone guide you through that year-long process that isn't responsible for grading 70 quizzes and preparing tomorrow's lesson plan? The solution seems pretty straightforward, but it's actually pretty hard to implement. So let's take, for example, the largest school district in the United States, New York City. So each year they publish the School Quality Survey Report, which is basically the data from the School Quality Survey that is sent out to parents, teachers, and students for them to rate their experience on a bunch of different factors like teacher collaboration and student achievement, to name the two most important for this case. And the purpose of this survey is to generate a snapshot for each school that parents can use to basically just keep pulse on how the schools are performing in their districts. So I took a sample of schools from the 2018 and 2019 academic year and found some very startling statistics. The sample included 294 schools and only 12% employed a full-time librarian. 17% employed a part-time librarian. Leaves about 70% with no librarian at all. 36% didn't even meet the minimum requirement of spending $6.25 per student on library services. Obviously, we can't use librarians to get students excited about learning if there are no librarians or there isn't enough money to fund their services. I use the same sample of schools to come up with a calculation to see how much it would cost to issue a pilot program where each school has one full-time librarian and meets the minimum funding requirements. And it costs $895,000 to just ensure that all 294 of these schools meet the minimum budget requirement. It then would cost about $11.3 million to employ a full-time librarian at schools that either don't have one at all or would need a full-time librarian instead of a part-time librarian. So the entire pilot program would cost somewhere in the ballpark of $12.2 million. And even though this is a big number, it doesn't include costs that would be saved by reducing teacher burnout and turnover or from any benefits that would come back to the school because students would be more engaged in their community, which is what we want because this pilot program is based on the idea that librarians should be used to promote integrated learning in a full-time capacity similar to that of teachers, but they don't have the responsibilities of running classes and making lesson plans, so they are more equipped to do this on a wider, larger, more in-depth scale. It would also help us fully recognize librarians for the professionals that they are. They are highly educated individuals, many with master's degree in library and information sciences. 
they are not optional. They are just as important as other faculty members and we need to start treating them and funding them as such.